let me make this clear. I mean, some people have been saying that it did not have an effect, but I think that's an extreme case. Um, to say it did not have an effect is uh, pushing the envelope too far. But to say that it did, it was the only effect, the only thing that affected the market last week is also pushing it to the other end of the extreme. Um, suffice to say that, yes, it did have an impact, particularly as it lent a lot of uncertainties. Again, the market moves on, on uncertainties, and this was one thing that mm. I think no one could really put quantify to quantify uh, the, the impact. No? But Particularly think, since it was coming off the back of a series of unfortunate events. You had the Davao blast, you had the declaration of a state of national emergency, and then there was the whole diplomatic kerfuffle. That's right. Um, I, I think what we must look at here is, number one, the declaration of state of national emergency um, is a tacit admission. That there is something wrong in, in so far as the peace and order is concerned. And, you don't have to look at it from a social side. Social side. Look at it from a business standpoint. Mm. Businessmen always want to have a predictable environment. And when you have this thing like th there is a lawless violence going on, then business will have to think twice whether they should invest more, whether they should keep their investments here, or whether they should just cut back even just a bit to keep themselves safe for, from it. So there is an effect here. And I think right now we're feeling the immediate effects of, of uh, funds moving out of uh, the stock market. But I think what we should be looking out for is the long-term effect of uh, what this will really mean for us. Well, the saga doesn't end there because from this morning we have uh, Duterte calling for the withdrawal of U.S. troops That's in right. Mindanao. Again, That's a right. clear departure from uh, the policy of previous administrations. Is right. that going to eat into sentiment as well this week? I, I would think so. But I think w what's really bothering the market now is the, the lack of clarity as to what the policy is. Okay. Um, are we having our own kind of pivot? Uh, the U.S. is doing a pivot to towards Asia. East Asia and Asia. Now, is the Philippines redefining its foreign policy? Is there a pivot somewhere that's still, that it still has to be made public and, and, and pronounced to the public? So we are at a guessing game right now, I mean, politically wise. Okay? Now, we must remem remember that there's a thin line, a thin but very firm line that connects um, politics and the economy. Okay, so what happens in politics eventually will, will gravitate towards the economy. Now, the key thing here is we, what we must look out for is, okay, we have good economic numbers, but will, will the steerings on the political side make it still possible to achieve or at least sustain this robust growth that we've had for the first two quarters of the year? So I think that's the main question right now. But again, it's a short-term noise, all this volatility. Um, let's move on to the big news, the other big news of the day, which is uh, Fed policy. Co yes. Comments overnight from uh, Fed Governor Lael Brainard calling for caution over the next rate hike. She is, after all, a voting member of the FOMC. Has your assessment of Fed policy changed at all? Well, right now, if we're looking to the September meeting next week, uh, our, our view is that there will be no change in, in, in the policy. But I think that what's important here for investors now is to consider, number one, um, a tweak in the rates is inevitable. It will come, maybe in the next three to six months, probably. So it will better serve investors, whether you're, you're a hedge fund manager, institutional investor, or even a retail investor, to start factoring that into your portfolio. I mean, it's, it's an inevitability, it will come. Now, if you look at two previews, Fed actions, major Fed actions. For example, in 2013, we had this what we call taper tantrum. When well, everybody was guessing when they will start cutting back on the QE3. And the decision happened, guess when? December of 2013. Right, right. In 2015, the question was when they will start raising interest rates. Again, the decision was reached December So the markets have a tendency of uh, so it seems, miscalculating that. Yeah, it seems that uh, there's something about December that the Fed wants. <laughs> right, so all right. So we look forward to December this year. And I look forward to talking about that with you again. Thanks very much. Jun Kalaikai, ANA Securities.